We often have moments in our lives where things come into focus, where maybe that greater purpose for your life just is a little bit clearer. For many of us, for the parents here, it's holding your child in your arms for the very first time. All that other noise in the world just kind of goes away, and you've got that clarity and that purpose in life. For others, it might be meeting that special person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. For others, it's more like a jolt, like a car accident, maybe like a health diagnosis. And for me, for me, it was a gunshot. It was 1997. I was a student doing an internship in Mexico City having my own adventure in a workplace and in a country where I didn't speak the language at first. And with what little money I had, I would add it up together and I would try to get a bus ticket out of Mexico City most weekends to have my own adventures, to get out and experience the beautiful countryside, the beautiful culture that's in Mexico. I had a wonderful time, but I had one adventure that I wouldn't wish on any of you. One weekend, I went to a place called Puerto Escondido. It's in the state of Guerrero. It's a little surfing village. It's a great place to go. I was doing the red eye bus trip back to Mexico City. So I left at about 10 o'clock at night. We were going to travel north to Acapulco and then inland to Mexico City. And while I was trying to sleep, I first heard the rat tat 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 of the automatic gunfire. And then I felt the spray of glass, shrapnel, and blood from other people in the cabin. We were under attack. And we had, in the, in the blink of an eye, that moment, that jolt, where things got very real very quickly. All the windows were blown out. There was an arc of bullets over top of the driver. And very fortunately for everybody in that cabin, myself included, he wasn't hit. Because if he was, I wouldn't be here today. After we got out of the crossfire, literally, the driver got out of harm's way, pulled over, turned on the cabin lights, and asked in Spanish, is anybody dead? No one was dead, but people were really injured. Chunks of glass in faces, pieces of, of the bus uh, stuck in, in, in people's uh, arms and legs. I was seated beside someone who is from Mexico, who's become a lifelong fr friend, Ricardo Castaneda. Ricardo and I were leaning away from each other, thankfully, because one of the bullets went between us, between our bus seat, and blew out a woman's kneecap on us. And that bullet was lodged in her, um, like it was for, for other people who were hit directly. We were told, get down on the ground, wrap clothes around your head, because quite often they attack twice. And so, we laid on the ground for a couple hours into Acapulco, waiting to be attacked twice. People were crying, people were very panicked, myself included, and people prayed. We didn't get attacked twice. We got into Mexico City in the morning, and I began asking myself in the days and the months, and especially in the years following it, when I had time to reflect, what do you do after the bullets miss you? I think it's a natural thing to do, to reflect on an incident that is traumatic for you, whether it's a health incident, uh, a gunfire attack like I had, or another traumatic situation, to ask yourself what you can take out of it, how you can better yourself, how you can better the world. Is Winnipeg that different than Mexico? Of course it is. But a few blocks from here, in 1919, the Winnipeg general strike took place. And we had upheaval 
in our streets. We had two of our very own killed by law enforcement on that bloody Saturday. And we had the city in a virtual state of military occupation. Now, we've come a long way as a community since then, but what we saw then and what we see around the world is too much division, polarization, anger, and hate. And why we're all here today to talk about ideas worth spreading is because we recognize that more powerful forces occur when you collaborate, when you work together. Let's flip things around and talk about what's possible when we're positive and we truly collaborate, especially with people we don't normally work with and we don't necessarily agree with. It's sure it's easy to have discussions with people that you agree with and you, uh, you know, fill each other up with self-affirming, uh, you know, talks about, about why we're both right. But re reach across the aisle, go across the street to people that you normally don't work with. United Way of Winnipeg is a great example of this community coming together. Business and labor, two groups that have often been viewed as opposing each other. In 1965, the United Way of Winnipeg was formed through a partnership between the Winnipeg Labor Council and the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce. And since then, they've raised millions of dollars to help people in our community who need a helping hand. And that's because they understood then, and we understand now, that collaboration is power. Hate, division, it sucks the life right out of you. It sucks the energy out of you. How much energy does it take when you're fighting someone? When you're angry? And the same goes for organizations. The same goes for communities. Kids understand this. My children understand this. This is Hayden and Austin. These are my wife, Tracy, and my uh, two boys. They're three and six years old. And when they go to the playground, they're not running to go get into a fight. They're running to have their own adventures. They're running out on the playground to challenge each other, to collaborate on whether it's playing soccer or just playing in the sandbox. And when they're in the sandbox, there's the occasional time when sand gets intentionally flinged in somebody's eye. And as a parent, you have to step in and do what parents do. But they understand the power of collaboration at a very, very young age. We understand it too. You step out of the sandbox, off the playground, and just look at the internet. One of the greatest vehicles for collaboration this planet has ever seen. Is it all good? No. My day job is a social media lawyer, and so I spend time working with the victims of cyberbullying. Sadly, people who often are different, and they're persecuted. They're persecuted to the point where in some cases they're trying to take their own lives. And it's absolutely heartbreaking to see the evil that occurs online in our world right now. Let's flip that around. Look at the internet and the power of TEDx as a movement. We understand that it's ideas worth spreading, not hatred worth sharing. And that's a very, very powerful thing. It allows us to come together to share ideas. You look at something like crowdsourcing, bringing together people that normally wouldn't be together to do something greater in a collaborative model. You look down the street from here on Innovation Alley, an organization like AscentWorks, now partnered with Ramp Up Manitoba. This is a group that takes collaboration and practices it gives people the tools in a hacker and maker space in order to collaborate, in order to commercialize ideas and spread them out to the world right here from Winnipeg. Now I've seen what happens when forces aren't working together. And the reason we're here today is because I think you also understand the true power of collaboration, that it is more powerful than hatred and division. Now, if you've had one of the moments I'm describing that I had, you understand this. And if you don't, make today, make your TED experience your gunshot experience, where that moment and that focus is so much clearer for you when you walk out of here today. And I ask you to ask yourself the question, what will you do after the bullets miss you? Thank you.